hello and welcome to the ID Instructor AutoCAD video tutorial series. My name's JR and I'm going to be your guide. Not only am I going to show you how to use drafting and design software, but I also want to help you understand the way designers communicate. Now I equate learning any software to being a wildlife biologist who just discovered a new species. Scientists usually want to know all about the new species, not just the physical aspects, but its behavior and what its role is in its ecosystem. Well, it's the same for drafting and design software. Designers are the scientist and the software is the animal. Now there are lots of drafting and design software available to work from. Here's just a handful of them. Some of them are actually exclusively two-dimensional in nature, meaning that the drawings that you see are drawn with lines and shapes. Others are more three-dimensional in nature and create realistic looking models. That's called BIM technology or building information models. This series is going to focus on AutoCAD made by Autodesk. It has been an industry standard for a long time and continues to be used today. Now what I like about AutoCAD is that many software uses the same interface, buttons, and commands. So if you learn AutoCAD, it can actually make learning other software a whole heck of a lot easier. We'll be learning the two-dimensional aspects of AutoCAD, but the software also does have three-dimensional aspects as well. Now I highly suggest learning 2D before you do 3D, just to give you a good, solid, foundational base. AutoCAD itself is a very different animal than what you've probably seen before because it was designed in the late 70s and it was released in the early 80s. It still shows signs of early computer programming days when you had to type DOS-like commands in order to get the software to perform. Now, most of you probably have no idea what I'm talking about, but just know that AutoCAD is going to look, feel, and behave much differently than software you've experienced previously. If at any time you feel frustrated with the software, please know that you are not alone. I remember very well when I first started learning AutoCAD in 2000, I hated it. It made no sense to me whatsoever, and I thought I would never get it. It did take time and practice, but now it's my most favorite program to work on. And how did it become my favorite program? I became the scientist and I took the time to learn how the software behaved. Once I learned it, the sky was the limit. You can produce so many types of drawings from technical to artistic in nature. It's pretty cool software. In addition to learning the software, I had to learn a couple new languages. No, I'm not talking about French or Arabic or anything like that. I'm talking the language of design and construction. Buildings have been built for many, 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 many years. And as a result, those in the construction world have used specialized communication systems. So drafting, for instance, is part of that communication system. You have to learn how to draft in order to communicate clearly. So what is drafting? Drafting is how we take the ideas we have in our heads and how a building or space should look and we put it into a tangible readable form that someone else can use to build that idea correctly. It's both an art and a science. It's an art because you have to know how to draw, how things are built and put together. You have to know how to visually communicate what something looks like. It's a science because there's a lot of math involved, there's precision, there's discipline, there's a lot of technical aspects behind it. Now architects are generally concerned about the safety and structure of the building. They manage how the building holds loads and environmental factors like heat, wind, and sometimes even earthquakes. They do a lot to ensure the building holds up to a lot of different forces. Interior design is all about people. How do people move in and use space? What types of spaces and objects do people need to complete their daily tasks? How can they be safe while they are inside, be it from a fire, from acoustics, air quality, physical limitations? There's so many factors that interior designers have to balance. So when an interior designer starts putting their ideas on paper, they usually have to do so through drawing them out. They need to make sure the drawings communicate the kind of accuracy it takes to build safe spaces. 
So we can't communicate safety by drawing messy or unreadable drawings. I mean, do you feel like it's safe to walk around the house that has just been hoarded for several years? Or when you go to the store, do you feel agitated by messy shelves? I know I do because I can't get the information in a logical, easy, or efficient way when things are messy and all over the place. So technical drawings, like floor plans and elevations, must be professional looking. Straight lines, accurate measurements, aligned dimensions, readable text. They must communicate all aspects of what is being built. A good designer never leaves their design open for interpretation to contractors or installers. So you got to learn how to draw in a way that you communicate everything efficiently. Now all these drawings that we create, the floor plans, the elevations, the schedules, sections, all that stuff, they are usually put into a big document called a construction document set, otherwise known as a CD set. Now these sets are actually contracts. Once an architect signs them, they become a legalized contract. Drawings are placed inside of a title block on these sheets, which organizes the entire set the title blocks do. These sets can hold lots of pages, sometimes up to 100 sheets per set. So it's super important that the drawings and title blocks are marked with symbols and annotation to help architects, designers, engineers, and installers navigate through the entire set quickly and efficiently. The CD set outlines the entire project from beginning to end. Each sheet in the set communicates a specific set of information. Now we're going to get into all that information as this video tutorial series progresses. Until then, know that each sheet has a purpose that feeds the whole project. Now before computer-aided drafting became a thing, drafters used to draft by hand. It was a very time-consuming task. If you have ever seen somebody produce hand-drafted drawings, they are actually incredibly beautiful. You truly had to be a craftsman to produce such accurate and well-designed drawings. Now and I have a lot of respect for hand-drafters. It's just that Computers and drafting software have really streamlined the construction process. With a click of a button, you can change the scale of a drawing, or the heaviness of a line, or delete or add lines at a whim. So this tutorial series is going to walk you through many of the behaviors and languages of AutoCAD and the construction drafting process. It's designed for people who have never seen or used AutoCAD before. There's going to be a combination of demonstrations and lectures throughout the series, but I guarantee there will also be plenty of personality because I think learning should be fun and interesting. So if you're willing to put up with my cheeky and ill-timed humor, then you're ready to learn AutoCAD at a level that you never thought possible. Just remember, it's okay to feel frustrated at first. I did too, honestly, but now I'm considered the Steve Irwin of AutoCAD, and we're going to tame the wildest software behaviors together. Crikey, we will! Thanks so much for watching this video. Let's watch the next video and let the games begin.